Hi everybody, my name is Malisha and today I'm going to walk you through an example of using DVC experiments to handle transfer learning problems. So transfer learning happens when we have some existing model that's been trained on maybe a really large data set and we want to take the weights that that model has learned and apply it to some other problem that's like a subset of what that model was trained on. So we'll update the head of our model to handle our specific data set and it will have all of the, I guess, memory from the old model to be able to pick out those particular things that apply to our new application. So basically we take some existing model that's been trained on a huge data set and we use fine tuning to get a more um, specific model that works on a subset of that data set. So today in our example, we're actually going to be working with AlexNet and SqueezeNet, which are both image classification models that are based on ImageNet, which is this huge data set. I think it has like 14 million images in it. So AlexNet and SqueezeNet have seen a lot of different images. But what we're going to do is take those models and apply it to a specific problem. So maybe you have a garden or you like to be outside a lot and you want to have some kind of camera around you that tells you whether an insect is an ant or a bee. So that's what we're going to do here is we're going to take a data set with bees and ants and we're going to run a few experiments with AlexNet and SqueezeNet to see which model performs better. So I already have VS Code open and we already have a DVC pipeline initialized. You can take a look at this if you go to GitHub and check out the iterative repos. You'll find this under pre-trained model demo. So if you want to see the code and maybe follow along, feel free to go clone that repo. But you'll see we have our DVC pipeline set up. There's this train stage with these hyperparameters. And we're going to update this model name a few different times. So what we're going to start by doing is I'll just open this up so you can see what's happening. This is the script that has where our model is being trained. It's where we pull in the data, load in params, all that good stuff. But in particular, when we're logging metrics for each training stage, we're going through a number of epics. So in these epics, you'll see this DVC live call here. So we'll use this several times. And what this does, it logs our metrics at each training epic. And we'll be able to look at it as a plot. We'll be able to look at it as a table. There's a few different ways we can compare our metrics across these different models. So now that you have a quick explanation of what's going on with DVC here, let's just jump into an experiment. So I'm going to run DVC exp run. What is happening here is that DVC has executed our training script and it's going through the training epics which admittedly is a little bit slow because I'm not working with the GPU. But as it goes through these epics, DVC is logging the metrics. It's logging the code that's attached to those metrics. It's logging the hyperparameters attached to those metrics. And it's logging the data that is attached to those metrics. And it does all of this so that you can have that end-to-end -end reproducibility when you're comparing experiments. So a lot of times we'll get caught up in trying to get the best model as fast as possible and we find a really, really good one, but we don't know what gave us that model. So that makes it really tricky to actually 
get the right code, the right environment, the right data set for deploying to production. But with DVC, you're able to reproduce everything from scratch and it's all stored in these custom Git refs. So when you make your Git commits, you're pretty much good to go. Um, I'm gonna let it finish this training epic. Oh, the training finished, or at least that epic did. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cancel that script so y'all aren't just watching the screen, well, the terminal run. I'm gonna go ahead and clear the terminal actually. And let's take a look at our experiment results. So I just ran DVC EXP show. And what that does is opens this table view. So what this table has is our accuracy and loss for the training epics we did run. And it looks like, looks like we're trending in the right direction. The loss definitely went down on that second training epic. The train time did go up, but we'll see our validation is getting better. And if I arrow over, you'll be able to see the exact hyperparameters we were using for this. So that way, if you did want to reproduce this experiment from scratch, you're able to do that without having to just kind of blindly figure out what you did to get there. But with this one being run, let's take a look at switching up our hyperparameters. So We've already seen what SqueezeNet looks like. Let's update this to AlexNet. And we'll just do that right here in the terminal, but I wanna show you how that works with DVC. So we have this params.yaml file, and you see all of our hyperparameters here. And you see SqueezeNet is our current model name. Now keep that in mind for when we run this command. So we're gonna run a new experiment with our DVC EXP run, except this time we're going to set a new parameter. But first, one thing I do need to mention, since we're logging on each training epic, that means when we start training again, DVC will continue from that previous training epic. So if we want to completely restart training from scratch, where we don't have any existing model training progress, we have to reset our experiment run. So that's why I'll be adding this dash dash reset flag. And then we can update our hyperparameters. So we'll change our model name to AlexNet. And I'm gonna run this. And it's so nice when I actually get that terminal command right the first time. But I want to make sure you noticed here in this params.yaml that model name is updated. We did not directly change that in this file. It just happened because we ran this particular um, command here. While this training epic is running, and we already know that's going to take a little while. I did want to show you one more thing. So while this training is running, let's take a look in here. In our DVC YAML, if you did want to just like run experiments without logging each training epic, like you just wanted the end result after all the epics are finished, you would come in here and remove this checkpoint true. So checkpoints are just a way to give you additional metrics because sometimes when we are running training epics, there'll be one epic that does incredibly well. And then for whatever reason, the accuracy will start going down. The loss will start coming back up. And without that kind of granular insight, it's really hard to figure out what you can change in your model or in your data set or hyperparameters or whatever if you don't know where that change happened. 
So that's one of the advantages DVC gives you is that you can see every little thing that happens throughout the life of your training epics. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that again because it takes a while. But let's look at that table again. So now you'll see we have a few new training epics under this new experiment. Um, it looks like AlexNet performed way better than SqueezeNet. So after two training epics, SqueezeNet was at 70% accuracy. After two training epics, AlexNet was at 86% accuracy. So we can see that AlexNet probably identifies bees and ants quite a bit better than SqueezeNet does. And just to make sure, you can see over here in our parameter values that absolutely nothing else changed except our model here. So this is one of the quick ways you can look at your results using DVC and you'll be able to just see how everything changes with time or changes with your hyperparameter values. And one last thing I want to show you, since you've seen the table, you've seen how to run experiments, um, the transfer learning model, it looks like AlexNet definitely wins, but I do want to show you what results we get if you look at a chart here with DVC. So I'm going to switch over to this plot and you can see just just how things change with time. So since we only got through two training steps, we'll only have two data points. So our initial loss was way up here at almost 45, probably at no, a little bit more than 45%. And then it drops substantially to looks like about 30%. And you'll see how drastically our accuracy improves. You can look how the training time is going. You can look at the validation metrics. And it's all here just in this plot. And another cool thing is if you were running all of the training epics, you could see this update in real time as you keep refreshing the page. But this is actually all that I wanted to show you today with our transfer learning model example using DVC experiments. And I hope you were able to see just kind of why we work with this tool so much. Um, until next time, keep trying to figure out how to identify those bees and ants.